time being 7 o'clock, I call to order the April 26th, 2022 Franklin School Committee meeting. Meetings are recorded by Franklin TV and shown on Comcast Channel 11 and Verizon Channel 29, as well as recorded by Franklin Matters. Any individual who also wishes to record this meeting must notify the chair in accordance with Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 38, Section 20F. At the conclusion of our meeting, we will be adjourning to executive session and we will not be returning to open meeting. Um, all right, so pledge student this evening. We have Gavin Warnakulasuria, who grade eight at Remington Middle School. Gavin is responsible, kind, thoughtful, and mature beyond middle school. He is diligent, understanding of his peers, and very patient. He brings high level analysis skills to the classroom and encourages his peers to interact with content on a deeper level. His teachers routinely refer to him as a leader in the classroom and school community. Gavin has many interests, including mountain biking, soccer, and playing the acoustic guitar. Academically, he is most interested in computer science and math. His passion for math and science led to him competing in the Sharon Math and Science Tournament where the team from Franklin earned fifth place in the team competition. He also then humbly admitted he earned first place in the science competition. <laughs> Remington is very proud to have Gavin as its representative. All right, so if we could all stand. Gavin, if you wouldn't mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Yep. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. As is customary, we will pause for a moment of silence. Thank you. All right, you guys can go ahead. Uh, all right, review of agenda. Everyone, the agenda is okay? All right. Uh, payment of bills. This is all set. Payroll, Ms. Stokes? Stokes. Payroll is in order. Okay. FHS student representative comments. I don't think they're joining us tonight. Okay. Uh, Dr. Hearn, superintendent's report. Sure. I have uh, several things to share with you and the community this evening, and I will try um, to capture a few things from the high school as well. Um, the first is uh, just to update you a little bit on where the state is in regards to the FY23 budget. Um, the House Ways and Means released a proposal that is going to be uh, debated uh, by the House of Representatives in the coming weeks. Uh, their proposal fully implements the second year of the six-year phase-in of the Student Opportunity Act. Uh, chapter 70 in this proposal is increased significantly by 495 million or about 9%. For Franklin, uh, an increase in Chapter 70 aid is proposed as the House budget bases Chapter 70 school aid at $60 minimum per pupil instead of the $30 per pupil that was in the governor's budget and as originally outlined in the SOA. High inflation is a big factor. Uh, as is the foundation rates increasing for uh, students of uh, low SES, students with special education needs, English learners, and other components of the formula like healthcare. Uh, so the impact to Franklin would be an additional 155,000 in Chapter 78 to the town for a total of about 310,000, uh, which is about double because we're used to getting either 25 or 30 minimum aid per pupil uh, over FY22. Uh, this proposal also sets aside an additional $67 million for circuit breaker reimbursement, which is closer to the fully funded amount of $460 million uh, at $441 million. Charter reimbursements rise significantly, uh, or 58%, from $155 to $244 million, and this appears to achieve 100% funding of the reimbursement formula, meeting the three-year target stipulated by the student uh, Opportunity Act, and this would be 100% funded for the first time since 2012. Uh, homeless transportation is also increased by 59%. Um, there is a proposal here to include $110 million for free school lunch programs. 
this would replace federal COVID funding, which is going away. As you know, for the past two years, school lunch has been uh, free for all students in public schools. Mm -hmm. Uh, the House will debate the Ways and Means proposal during the coming weeks, resulting in a final House budget, and the Senate will then follow with their process. Uh, it is early to make projections on where this will ultimately end, but I wanted to keep you informed uh, about how the state budget process plays out and where things currently are as of uh, today. Um, I wanted to also provide the committee and the community with an update on the Davis Thayer Elementary School building. I know many in the community are wondering uh, in January, during the superintendent's report, I updated you that this fall, building principals walked the building and identified items that are being repurposed throughout the district. Um, and we also have a piece of furniture in this room this evening that has been repurposed uh, for, uh, from Davis Thayer School. Uh, both uh, in January and currently, the building is currently in use for some much needed storage. Uh, it is currently holding all of the district and town PPE in terms of masks um, and hand sanitizer in particular. Um, we noted in January that we wanted to seek input from MSBA, uh, which we were able to do uh, about a month ago, um, informing them of the steps we have taken so far related to um, having students from Davis there attending Keller Elementary School this year. Um, because taking Davis there um, out of the school department's authority could have implications for future building projects. So we wanted to make sure that things were above board with MSBA. And then uh, lastly, um, and you are certainly aware of this, um, we've recently established, and we said in January we were going to, and we have established the Space Needs uh, Subcommittee who's examining space uh, and space needs based on our enrollment and specialized programs and utilization across the district with an eye towards potential building projects and redistricting. So that's kind of the status uh, and some steps that have been taken since January. I particularly wanted to note uh, that we have communicated with MSBA uh, and we were able to communicate with them as we said we were going to uh, in January. I would like to congratulate uh, members, this is a big science and math night, mm -hmm. I'd like to congratulate the members of our National Science Honor Society for an amazing evening of science enrichment. Um, I forgot how much fun that night is because we haven't had it in a couple of years. Um, but the students uh, and their advisors do an amazing job putting together interactive and engaging activities for children. And uh, in addition, I was just so impressed and um, you may be aware that I have a science background and I know a thing or two. Uh, so I was so impressed with the explanations that the students were using to break down the scientific concepts and explain it to their, um, their younger peers. And I think it was um, really a tribute and a testament. That's when you really know that somebody knows what they're talking about is when they can break it down uh, and teach it to somebody else. Um, I was in every single room um, and uh, saw areas of physics, biology, chemistry, computer science, robotics, and more, uh, including out on the uh, field uh, between Horace Mann and the high school. Such a fun night and a pleasant return to some of our normal and amazing traditions. Thank you to the students, very well done, and thank you to the faculty and staff who were there supporting them, and for the families for coming out and enjoying the fun. I want to um, use this opportunity to remind the community um, that the um, Director uh, of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, uh, Ms. Heidi Harris, uh, is a candidate and finalist for the position, and she will be uh, in the district on Tuesday, May 3rd, from 6.30 to 7.30 here in Council Chambers uh, to engage with uh, parents, uh, guardians, families, and community members. Uh, she recently spent half a day in the district prior to April break. Uh, meeting with students, administrators, um, having lunch at Franklin High School, and meeting with the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. So uh, the next step in the process will be engagement with uh, families, and we're seeking uh, input and feedback from uh, participants in that process. Uh, Night of the Arts is coming up on uh, Friday night, uh, so this is a reminder, um, it should be a, an excellent night to showcase um, the arts in Franklin Public Schools um, and at Franklin High School. It's 5.30 on Friday evening. I'd like to congratulate two kindergarten classes <clears throat> in Franklin, uh, one at Jefferson and one at Parmenter. Uh, congratulations to Mrs. Rogers' kindergarten class at Jefferson and Mrs. Ford's class at the Parmenter Elementary School. Uh, Sheriff 
Sheriff Patrick McDermott formally announced that uh, they are among a few classrooms uh, who won the Comfort Dog Naming Contest as part of uh, an endeavor that they've been doing over the past uh, couple of weeks. The Sheriff's Department received over 1,500 submissions from 35 Norfolk County schools, uh, and there were many great submissions. In the end, it was hard for them to choose one, so they combined a few of their favorite choices, and the kindergartners had submitted uh, among the finalist names were Teddy, Edward, and Buddy. And so the Sheriff's Department decided to name the comfort dog Eddie and um, sent a very cute video of, this, of, the, uh, of the pup. <laughs> and uh, students in these classes help to suggest some of the winning names. Um, they're scheduling a visit for the class to meet with Eddie and help him celebrate, and I will include a link to uh, the recorded video announcement uh, from the Sheriff's Department about the naming of the comfort dog. Eddie also has an Instagram account. Um, <laughs> if anybody would like to follow his adventures, Eddie should get a at, milkshake. At Eddie the comfort dog. Um, let's see. Um, I want to highlight uh, something that has recently gone out um, to the high school community um, and is being led by Lily Rivera, our Director of Marketing and Communications, uh, in part, um, in conjunction with the Diversity, Equi and Equity, and Inclusion Committee. Um, and she is uh, spearheading Project Rain Check uh, as a district-led project that gives students an opportunity to spread messages of unity, positivity, and inclusive in inclusivity beyond their schools and into the fabric of the community. Um, when you walk through our schools, there are heartfelt messages of community and celebrations of diversity that help create a sense of belonging. And our goal is to amplify student voices and empower a greater sense of belonging in our community um, by reminding everyone uh, that even in the rain we shine. And she is currently um, taking submissions um, from students at Franklin High School, and I would encourage them to participate in submitting uh, their ideas uh, for uh, messages uh, to be revealed uh, in the uh, downtown when it rains. Um, you, they will be utili utilizing invisible spray and stencils to create the body of work. And when applied to a stencil, the ground where the invisible spray was used will repel water, thus unveiling a secret art piece. Um, and so that is currently underway, so we encourage our high school students to uh, put in a submission. Uh, one submission is permitted per student, uh, must embody the theme belonging, uh, celebrating unity through uniqueness, uh, an original work uh, with a proposed location downtown, and um, that has recently been tweeted out. I'm wondering that, it, I saw it on Twitter, um, I'm wondering that it's also out uh, in, in other places. Um, and um, it's also up on, a, on the website. So we're excited to see that come together and promote uh, unity across the entire town. And uh, lastly, I just want to recognize um, that we are approaching um, some appreciation and recognitions, and so I want to use this opportunity to recognize uh, individuals in the Franklin Public Schools. Um, tomorrow is Administrative Assistant Appreciation Day, uh, so we send heartfelt thanks to our administrative assistants. We have Principal Appreciation Day, so remember to thank a principal on May 1st. Uh, school Lunch Hero Day for our cafeteria school lunch heroes um, are, is on May 6th. Um, Teacher Appreciation Week is the week of May 2nd to May 6th. And School Nurses Day is coming up on May 11th. Uh, so we want to recognize, honor, and thank uh, individuals uh, in the Franklin Public Schools who work in those roles. Um, I also think it's important to recognize the PCCs, um, who I know have been um, actively planning for teacher appreciation uh, in particular, and um, they are uh, so instrumental um, to, uh, to supporting students uh, and teachers, so thank you to the PCCs. Happy to take any questions. Okay. Camille? No questions, um, but I do hope that um the public watching will contact your representatives and senators and ask them to pass that budget. Dave? Uh, no, thank you uh, so much. Uh, just fantastic news, kind of top to bottom. I uh, really appreciate uh, the report. Thanks. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, just to echo your sentiment about Science Night, I uh, thought that was great. Uh, I was glad I was able to get out there with, with my son, Chris. Um, he enjoyed it thoroughly, and, and the students did a phenomenal job. They kept the students engaged, and, and not just the older students, but 
the young kids as well, all ages. And I think I think the kids really that went there got a lot out of it. Um, so that was really really great. Uh, can't wait till next year, and hopefully we can uh, do do more bigger and more students. So um, great night. Um, you'd mentioned the DEI director on the third. Um, is that? for school committee as well, or, or will we have a separate session? You'd be welcome to attend. Yep. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, and then thank you for the update around the Night of Arts, because I wasn't aware about that, so I think my boys will probably love that as well. So um, love to see students just you know, showcase their work and really set the foundation and, and like the seeds for, for young students to see what could be done and, and really open up their eyes, so, so thank you. Uh, yes, thank you for um, well, this, all this update and for uh, information um, informing the community about um, the latest what we're doing on Beacon Hill with uh, the budget. And I mean, the only question I have is, is uh, Eddie going to be coming to the next uh, school committee meeting? Because <laughs> I think we could, that, that'd be really awesome if we could get him in here. I'd be happy to invite him. All right, there Let's we go. see if we can get him here. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Elise? I second the request for Eddie. Um, I'll make sure to be in person for that. So uh, just, I guess, one question, Dr. Hearn, about the, the DT. So what would be the next steps with that as far as the district is concerned and then as far as us as school committee members are concerned? Sure. So um, I think the my recommendation would be to have a conversation with the space needs and facilities um, assessment subcommittee uh, to you know, kind of begin thinking about utilization across all K-8 to schools, uh, consider that in light of our current and projected enrollment, and uh, be thinking about what you uh, might choose to do with Davis there. Okay, thanks. Maybe you said that in the report. I'm, I'm not feeling well, so my brain's a little slow. So thank you if you said that for repeating it um, no, or for clarifying. I think that was helpful. It connected some dots. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Megan? Um, hi. Yeah, uh, yeah. thank you, Dr. Hearn, for the report. And uh, yeah, the um, uh, science night at the school was uh, great. I attended that with my daughter. We really enjoyed that. And um, I, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hearn. All right, next we have guests' presentations. Dr. Hearn, if you wanted to see yeah. that up. So, um, so I think at one of the superintendent reports, perhaps, you had one. made a yeah. request um, because you were very intrigued in hearing more about uh, the Region 3 Science Fair winners. And so we are joined here tonight by two of them. So I will invite Antonio and Anna to come up to the table here next to Mr. Jagir. Um, they have prepared a brief presentation for you to highlight and showcase um, their, uh, their science fair projects. Um, unfortunately, Arav could not join us this evening, but um, the first place winners, Antonio and Arav, uh, worked together, and Anna w came in second place. So you're welcome to come and sit up um, here at the desk. Or you can, oh, you know, cool. wherever you're comfortable. Or, I will bring you a chair there. Oh, no, I mean, if you're comfortable <laughs> there. There's a, there's a slide presentation queued up, Mr. Jagir, if sure. you want to help facilitate that for them. You can have a seat, and then you can run your slide presentation from there. Does that work? Yeah. Great. Um, I also want to note, as they get settled, uh, Bill Bobrowski is attending um, the webinar. He is our science department head at Franklin High School and uh, has been supportive uh, and supporting the students. And uh, we also have Josh Hanna, uh, high school principal, is joining as a panelist on the webinar. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, cool. Okay, so I'm Antonio, my teammate was Rav, and... Uh, I'm Anna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so this is just a little about how the science fair works. So uh, most schools have a high school science fair that can then send projects to the regional fair or they can also send two projects directly to the state fair. Um, but the regional fair is the only way that you can go to the international fair. Mm -hmm. So the regional fair sends projects to both the state fair and the international fair. Um, we had to start at the regional fair because FHS doesn't do the science fair, but most students start at their high school so they get that extra round of practice mm -hmm. and guidance from their school on how to go through the process. 
So um, my project was, well, me and Rob's project was the PAW, the Portable Affordable Wheelchair Enhancer. And um, what it is, is just an attachment to a wheelchair. You can still hear me if I stand over here, right? Yeah. Yep. Cool. It's just an attachment to a wheelchair that makes it electric. Um, cool. Really easily attachable and detachable. You can take it off and put it back on. Uh, what? Okay. So the reason we have the paw is because wheelchairs right now cost, or electric wheelchairs, cost upwards of $2,000, and they're really expensive. They're also really big and bulky, so you need, like, you know, big utility stuff to move them around and, like, transport them. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so what this is aiming to do is to make it easier for people to get an electric wheelchair so that way they don't need to push around all the time and make it easier for them to be able to transport it around and do whatever because you know that's something that we thought people should be able to do. So yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That's amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just in shock. I'm in shock. So $150? Yeah. Wow. Okay, sorry. Uh, then my project was encryption decoded, effects of cipher choice on entropy. And I was trying to answer the questions, could historically used encryption methods actually be stronger than modern encryption? And which encryption type will keep our private data the most private? Because um, even though people are trying to protect their online data, there's still a lot of hacking and a lot of data breaches. So I first created a computer program that tested many different types of encryption to find the strongest, including both modern and historically used ciphers. And after running almost a thousand tests, I discovered that the modern industry standard for encryption actually was not as strong as an older type. Um, so I then coded a program that digitized this historically used cipher, creating a new encryption methodology that is better than the current industry standard and offers better security. You're hired. I'm so glad. <laughs> I, I'm so glad I don't go to high school now. I would be such a loser. What is this? We did not learn this in high school. Oh my god. That's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> So, so the future plan for, for PAW is to make it, um, well, first finalize it, because right now it's in the prototype stage. Uh, we want to take PAW and make it so that people can actually buy it around the world or just around wherever. We want people to be able to get PAW. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's where we're trying to take this. It's possum. Oh, I heard someone else make that joke earlier, too. That was you. Oh, my God. Awesome. See yourself up. Oh, God. I'll be your marketing agent. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Um, and I plan to do a lot more research on encryption and then create a better program to encrypt documents easily using the strong encryption type that I discovered in my research so that then I can use this methodology to create a new industry standard which will protect the world's data from future data breaches and hackers. Anna, I just read today that the encryption we do, like it's gonna be hacked and it's all gonna fall apart and so we need you. Like I just read that today that everything is gonna fall apart and that like the Egyptians ha were really advanced but then like everything Everything fell apart, and the only thing they have left is the stuff that didn't get destroyed by nature. So, I've, stop it, harassing me. I'm taking an interest in these young people. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Can we come look at the wheelchair? Yeah, sure. Are we allowed to? I'm, I'm really intrigued by this. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah, let's see it. You want to see it? I can see it. It's oh, you can go play with it. Can you turn it around so we can see the mechanism on the back? Oh, okay. Give a, give a little twirl. Yeah. <laughs> Mark it.
Santa. Mirror box too. Yes. And um, two million. And this two million. <laughs> 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 Thank God I listened. <laughs> So had had you done any modifications to the wheelchair whatsoever? Uh, so no, actually, the wheelchair you could take off all of the um, you could take off all the paw parts and it would just be a regular wheelchair again. The mm -hmm. wheelchair wasn't damaged or changed in any way. Uh, yeah, so it, it just it fits. It would be on on uh, you know any it's a great idea. any wheelchair, you yeah. know, like anybody would just be able to pick up this one and just slap it right onto the device. Yeah. Do they have a standard like widths of wheelchairs? They okay. Have, like, and so to make this work for that, all you really need to do is get different sizes and make it slightly longer. Mm -hmm. So what was your inspiration moment, you and Arav? Like what happened where you were like, oh my god, this is our idea? Well, we, we were coming up with a bunch of ideas and we started like doing a few. And then we were like, we, we kind of just got more interested in the wheelchair project. And then we got the wheelchair at like, you know, at, um, what's it called? At a lot of places you can get um, wheelchairs for just for free. Wow. And, um, yeah, so we got one, and then one time we were, we were trying to like roll it up a hill, up like this like really low inclined hill, and it was hard. So then, then we're like, wow, we should, we should really do this. Cool. That was kind of one point. That's really cool. You're really on Shark Tank right now. We're going to vote whether you go. <laughs> <laughs> Work with the marketing team and the, the financials. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, have to, I'll have to talk to other people on, on what that is. <laughs> incredible. And Anna, too, I, I guess I love, um, you know, not only is there so much um, incredible work with the coding that you had to do in order to kind of get to where you were, but also obviously is, is so much research that you had to do to look at the historical context of uh, it, which is absolutely you know it's it's fantastic and it's amazing to hear this is uh, this is fantastic this is a wonderful night uh, I'm, I'm so thankful uh, that you guys uh, elected to, to come and present in front of us thank you so much yeah thank you all right <laughs> just letting them, letting them all geek out about this um, no, this, no, no gr great work um, very very impressive um, just a couple questions I do have about this um, so I see it's battery powered. Like, do we know like how long how long does the battery last, and like how many batteries is the, are in there? Like, what's how does what's the, the duration? So, <laughs> like right now, ten nine volts. Bat, we've we've used this bat, so we haven't done like a full length test of constant power on, mm -hmm. but um, we know that we've used this battery for like the first like few the first like eight months or so of making it when testing it around. We didn't charge the battery at all, and we had it on for a pretty long time. So we're estimating that it has a pretty good lifespan on battery. Right now we're using a lithium ion battery at, no, no, no. We're using a lead acid battery at 12 volts. We want to go to lithium ion, so that way it'll last long. Or solar powered. <laughs> yeah, and then and <laughs> my, my time. we'll have to wait for really sunny days. <laughs> Yeah. You see him on the highway. <laughs> no, but it's it's amazing. I, I love just solving a problem of, of little things that people will deal with, and it's a simple solution. And especially from a cost saving standpoint, I think I think this is this is huge, and it just makes things a lot more accessible. Um, because I, I can think of when my mother was in a, in a wheelchair, you know, we'd push her around, but if she had this as well, and just just being able to be on her own and not having to use her arms to move things, it, it, makes, it makes things a lot easier um, and just more accessible. So, so great, great there. Um, Anna, uh, amazing with what, you're, what you were doing. It, what you, when you were speaking about this, made me think of the, the Native American to code talkers and code breakers and just how their, their code wasn't broken and it, was, it, it didn't use all the modern technology that we have today. And sometimes we, we overcomplicate things and, and think, okay, newer is better. But sometimes if you just do it the right way um, and you don't need to go with the fancy bells and whistles, you know, you, you get a better solution. So um, great to look backwards to, to move, move forward. So um, great job and look forward to see, seeing what your program looks like. 
uh, thank you both so much for um, sharing your projects with us. Yeah, this is fantastic. Uh, Antonio, to you and Arav, yeah, this is, I mean, a yeah, brilliant idea. I, I love that you had a goal of you know, putting something together that has just a very direct impact on people's lives. It's you know, just flabbergasted that this isn't already a thing that people can do. So no, it's um, yeah, excellent that you had just that practical um, goal in mind for your project. And um, Anna, yeah, same to you. They're just like, I mean, when I read the title of what you're presenting, I was like, I don't know, I don't know what this means. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so like, yeah, kudos to you. That's uh, absolutely brilliant. I love how just like forward thinking you are with your project. And I mean, I have I have a hard time remembering half my passwords. So <laughs> the fact that the fact that you did this, yeah, it's, it's, it's wicked impressive. So thank you. Elise? Yeah, you, you guys are blowing my mind over here. Um, big kudos to you and just so much gratitude for the different types of brains we have in this world. Like Dave McNeil, I, I didn't understand most of the words on that slide, which is sort of terrifying and probably means that I need better encryption, right? Um, it also made me think about the Franklin portrait of a graduate and really just feeling so proud and kudos to you too, Mr. Hanna and um, the science chair who's on the call, whose name is Bill Bob, Bob, Bobrovsky. Um, kudos to all of you and everybody who helped with these projects. Um, really, we've got these confident and self-aware individuals, empathetic and productive citizens, curious creative thinkers, effective communicator and collaborators and reflective and innovative problem solvers. It's just like you guys are really just the epitome of our portrait of a graduate and we're just so proud and really glad to see you and get those tippers on that wheelchair so we could get people in there. <laughs> Megan? Um, yeah, very impressive. I'm in awe of, of uh, bo both of these projects. Um, I've, I've always uh, participated in the science fair uh, when I was a student, um, and I, you know, I just think it's just really impressive what, what you're doing. So, nice work. Yeah, I just had a question. You said that uh, 990 tests. How long would, did that take? Um, a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. So I coded all of the different types of encryption for the program to actually do it. And then I had to run it on five different documents. Um, and each one I ran the same test five times so that I could get averages. Okay. Um, and then I also did variations of every cipher. So each test, depending on the um, encryption type, some of them took a little longer than others, but it took a long time. <laughs> My mind is just blown. I didn't understand a word you just said, <laughs> but it sounds, I, I just, I'm, I mean, we're gonna be okay if this is, yeah. you know, who's, who's coming up. So I, I think that we'll, we'll do great. Um, Antonio, I wonder, how fast does the wheelchair go? <laughs> um, like, up. like how fast we'll can it, how fast can we get it? Hop in. So before we geared it up, it went like too fast. <laughs> well, but what's before too we fast? It down, it went too fast. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's my measurement. Too fast, a little bit too fast. <laughs> right, right now, it's also probably a little bit too fast because I don't think you want to be going really fast in a wheelchair, unless you really want to. <laughs> that, that, it could be fun. Um, if you trick out the wheels. I mean, my kid in the back is like, let's go yeah. fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll keep it fast. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, that you can limit down. So it can go wheelchair speed or it could go a little bit faster if you're, if you're like, you know, yeah. you want to go fast. Yeah, you're a kid, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then your next steps are to get just a patent and start seeing an interest for more? Yeah, the next step, well, well we want to like finalize it a little bit more than now because right now it's still you know a prototype. Yeah. But um, after we finalize it a little bit, we want to get a patent on it and then try to like lease it or something to another company that can make it. Because okay. you know it wouldn't be that effective if we just made a bunch of those in the garage, <laughs> yeah. and not a lot of people would be getting it. <laughs> so the goal is to get it to a lot of people. So yeah. Anna, what's next steps for you? Um, 
so I I really want to do more research like I want to test it in different ways okay. to see if like every way I can test the security if it still shows that that type is the strongest mm -hmm. um, and then if it um, if it is still the strongest in every way I want to create a really good program that can encrypt it on its own with its own keys um, and then maybe make an actual standard that can be used all over the internet. Oh, I love it. How did you get interested in this? Um, well, I really like computer science mm -hmm. um, and I was just doing some research one time and I found that there are a lot of hackers and a lot of data breaches each year and I, it was a big problem so I wanted to research the modern types of encryption but also some older types to see if maybe there was a type that had already been invented that was better mm -hmm. that just wasn't being used and there was. She's using her powers for good, folks, because clearly you have to I know, have right? skills <laughs> to be able to test these models, so we appreciate that you're putting this to protecting people's data and not... <laughs> like, not like a Lex Luthor type. white hat, not a black mm -hmm. hat. Yeah. Black. Yeah. No, that's great. And you guys have a lot of support in school, obviously, from your teachers and... Yeah. That's yeah. Good. All right, good. <laughs> great. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Yeah. One thing. Um, so one thing that was mentioned in the slide that I almost forgot, um, that you'd gone to the regional to, to get to uh, the next level. Um, and Franklin High School doesn't do a science fair. Do we have like history on that? Like, is that, uh, has that always been the case or? I, to my knowledge, there hasn't been one at Franklin High School. Um, and I did want to conclude noting that I think there's a potential opportunity for growth here and um, you know some success to build on, and so it would be something that I think um, that ought to be considered. Great, thank you. Okay, All right. thank you both so very much for coming in. This was really the highlight, I think, <laughs> of our year. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can be so bold to say so. Budget is not as fun. Nope, nope, <laughs> oh, great. Thank you both so very much. We're just beyond the moon with what you guys are accomplishing. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
All right, moving right along, consent agenda. Dr. Hearn. I recommend approval of the minutes of the April 12th, 2022 school committee meeting as detailed. I recommend approval of the budget transfers as detailed. I recommend acceptance of two checks totaling $5,050 as follows. $50 from Minted for supplemental supplies and $5,000 from the Jefferson PCC for field trips. I recommend acceptance of two checks totaling $10,850 for FHS scholarships as follows, $10,000 to the Digital Federal Credit Union and $850 from the Carol Maher Memorial Scholarship. I recommend acceptance of two checks totaling $1,000 from Special Olympics Unified Champion Schools for supplemental supplies and in-house enrichment as detailed. And I recommend acceptance of a check for $3,312 from Music Parents for in-house enrichment as detailed. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as detailed? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, discussion, questions? All right, seeing none, vote will come in motion. Roll call vote, Camille? Yes. Dave Callahan? Yes. Al Charles? Yes. Dave yes. McNeil? Yes. Elise Stokes? Yes. Megan Whitmore? Yes. Denise Spencer, yes. All right, motion passes. Um, moving right along, Dr. Hearn, new business. Oh. Citizens comment? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. All right, citizens comments. Are there any citizens in the audience, uh, in person or online, who would like to make a comment on an item not on tonight's agenda and falls within the committee's purview? No, uh, no. Okay. okay, Dr. Hearn. New Ooh. business. business. Um, so at the next meeting, you can expect a, um, a presentation. Um, we had talked about doing a presentation on um, discipline and, uh, and, and then we'll fold into that some anti-bullying practices. Uh, there may be policy coming from the May 3rd meeting. Um, we have a highlight uh, in that our unified basketball team uh, has been invited to attend uh, one of the May meetings and we're looking to confirm that for May 10th. And um, that may be a good time for you to uh, elect uh, a represent your board representative to the BICO and accept collaboratives. Um, so that is uh, what I would anticipate. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Hearn. All right, so finally, we will be adjourning to executive session and we will not be returning to open meeting. All right, so pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining with the FEA RN unit as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the school committee and the chair so declares. Pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A2, to discuss strategy in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel. Is there a motion to adjourn into executive discussion as discussed? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, vote will come on the motion. Camille? Yes. Dave Callahan? Yes. Al Charles? Yes. Dave McNeil? Yes. Elise Stokes? Yes. Megan Whitmore? Yes. Denise Spencer? Yes. All right, so thank you very much, everyone. We'll see you next time.